Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today's tutorial is part one of how to paint a Legio Tempestus wall or Titan. I'm going to start off with the legs and get them done, then we can work on the rest. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. First colour today is going to be Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to be using this to do the larger parts of the pistons. There's a lot of pistons on this miniature. You think about when the legs are moving around. There's going to be all kinds of things like keeping the pressure and keeping it steady and adjusting slightly so you've got pistons all around the top of each hip you've got them on most sides of the kind of thighs there's a few little ones at the bottom too so you just want to paint all of those bits of gold next up we're going to use some Vallejo Model Air Chrome I'm going to use this to do all of the little actual pistons themselves. I thought I'd do these a lot brighter than the rest of the legs, which I'm just going to be leaving with a kind of shaded null oil, a Grax Earth shade and lead belcher. And these are going to be cleaner because if the piston's moving up and down, then it's going to be wiping any grease and grime off that if it's got a decent seal, so you'll have that nice, clear, shiny piston. If it's well maintained, of course. Next up, Citadel McCrag Blue. I'm going to start working on some of the armour plates. We're going to be using this on the ones which have attached to the legs here at the bottom. Also those plates which are between the large kind of toes. And then there's some armour plating on the toes themselves too. So once that's done, we're going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. We're going to start picking out all the filigree, which is on the edges and the armour trim of all the armour panels. Now you can see on the toes that I haven't actually painted those blue yet, but you'll notice they go blue shortly. So if you want to paint those toes as well, that is fine. Leave all the top parts and the ridges in Lead Belcher. You'll be able to see those blue toe parts in the next section of the video when we're shading them. So you'll see which bits of painted blue with that. So for these sections of armour, we're going to be using the Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. You mainly will be getting this around the edges of the filigree, where the blue armour plate joins that, so that you're getting that nice darker shade around the edges of all the lead belcher stuff. Now you can paint these with the armour plates on, it's not too much of a Bother if you do, you won't be able to get to all the edges quite so easily. But if you want to paint them up while they're fully built, that is absolutely fine. I'm painting another one up in Legio Mortis colours at the moment, in a fully built state. Now we're going to use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade, and we're going to use this on all of the Retributor Armour sections. This will dull them down and grind them a little bit, while still letting that gold colour shine through. Bring out the detail on each of those sections so you can see all those little details which these miniatures are absolutely superb for. Do you find the level of detail on them is absolutely amazing. Now we're going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil. This is going to be used for pretty much all of the lead belt sections on this. It does take quite a while to make sure you get all the areas and things like that. Certain parts you may not be able to see beneath the armour plates, but it's worth doing them because if you get that slight angle where you can see behind it and it's not painted or it's not shaded, it's nice to be able to get that done. But again, if you've already built it, that's not a problem. Once it's on the tabletop, you're not going to notice anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so we've put these first two parts of the armour plates on the left leg, and we're going to be using the Citadel McCrag Blue to paint the armour plates here. You can see where they've been sprayed on the sprue, and the white spray that I used initially came out really badly and gave a kind of snowy effect on all the panels, so there is a few little lumps and bumps on some of these panels because the white spray was a bit naff. Now 
I'd probably put that down to the user error rather than the bad spray though to be fair. Sometimes don't quite shake that paint as much as I should do. Now we're going to use Citadel Lead Belcher and we are going to go around all of the areas of armour plates that we've just applied. So painting all of the trim and the filigree with Lead Belcher. Essentially doing what we've just done on those smaller armour plates at the bottom to bring them all up to the same level. Again, this does take quite a while because there's a lot of details on these parts. But it is worth taking your time to do them because they do look absolutely amazing once they're painted. So now I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade on the rest of the armour plates. As we did with the smaller ones, we're going to be going around the edges. Around all the details, filling any little bits. If you want to wash the whole thing, you can do means that when you're colouring in that blue a little bit later it will all have the same shade beneath so it will fit together a lot better but it's not necessary if you don't want to. Now you're going to use Citadel Apothecary White Contrast Paint. I'll show you that twice just to make sure. You're going to use this on the white sections of armour plating. Try not to get this onto the lead belcher because it does really dull it down. Just makes it look grey rather than the metallic. If you do, it's not too bad. Once you put the shade in there and give that a little bit of a highlight of lead belcher later on, that'll look fine. Now we're going to use Citadel Null Oil to go around the edges of all the armour trim and get them shaded. The reason doing this in a couple of parts is because the detail on them and the amount of actual time to spend paint the whole Titan. If you're taking your time painting it does take quite a few hours and time wise I did not have the time to paint it all up in one go. So the second part of that will be coming soon and painting up the top half at the moment. Next up I'm going to use a tiny little bit of fulgurite copper and just do some of these pipes on the back of the waist there just to give that a little bit of colour so it's not all just one bulk blob of lead belcher The copper finished, we're going to use some McCrag blue. I'm going to start reapplying the colour to these big armour plates. Now when you're reapplying this, try and think about where the light's going to be catching it. If you're not too sure where that'll be, put the top half of the Titan on and just see where it's going to be heavily shaded. I haven't gone too over the top with these just because of the scale of it. There's going to be a lot of shadow from that top half sitting over the legs and over the waist area so I'm not going to go too mad with the highlights so you can see here holding the top half on just so I'm looking at where we can do those highlights and I've added a little bit of white to the McCrag blue not too much white just enough to give that a little bit of a lighter shade I'm now highlighting it in the areas where I think the light would be catching it more Now we're going to add a second lot of white to the previous mix. I'm just going to carry on highlighting this piece of the leg. As I say, we're not going too mad with the highlights and making them too bright. I'm trying to keep it quite toned down just because of the scale that it's meant to be. I don't want it to be too bright and shiny and look like a well highlighted or anything like that. I want it to be quite dark and quite... kind of sullen looking I suppose. So 
So now I'm going to use Vallejo White and we're going to start highlighting and colouring those white armour plates. When you're doing this you don't need to be too smooth or anything like that. The scale of it is going to be tarnished, it's going to be weathered. So when I'm applying the white I'm not doing it smoothly, I'm leaving it quite streaky. I'm also leaving some of the apothecary white showing through so it looks a little bit mottled and a bit tarnished. Because I expect he wouldn't be out every day buffing it to a shine if they're in the middle of a war. Now we're going to go back over the lead belcher and just give that a little bit of a highlight to make some of those sections stand out and shine a bit so it's not all dull. That just brings the details out on those armour trim and the filigree parts as well because you've got loads of stuff like that at the bottom of the legs. You can also at this point dry brush the rest of the legs just to give them a little bit of a shine where that null oil went over earlier on. The final thing that we're going to do is use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use this to kind of weather the panels a little bit. So we're going to be using this in the grooves in the armour plates. I'm also going to be doing a few little runs from the overhanging sections of filigree. We're also going to be griming up the bottom sections of the feet and the big armour plates too, just to make it look like they've been weathered and collected some dirt over the time. You'll see this probably better once finished on the next section. And that is the finished legs for the Legio Tempestus Warlord Titan. Really happy with how it turned out. Looking forward to getting the rest of the Titan finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.